we have two long lines right here. The refrigerant goes uh, like, like this and like that, okay? And they connect typically a unit that's the condensing unit that's far away from the indoor unit of the evaporator, okay? Now, this A coil has a tray that collect the water. You see that tray? It has the, the shape of the coil so that when there's some condensate coming out of the air, it drains down, collects right in here. But that whole section like under there is open, so the tray just goes around, okay? And that airflow goes up, as we talked about. Ooh, come on now, why did you do that? It goes up and then across the coils like that. It's sealed up here so that you prevent the air from bypassing. The air needs to go across the coil to be cooled. And when it does, if it's moist air, you get some condensate on that coil, and it dr flows down, drains, collects in the pan, and then comes off right here. And it looks like they have two drain lines in case one gets plugged, and then you'll have an alarm for the second one, and then make sure and get it serviced before you have overflow and spill. True? But uh, what... What are all these copper tubes? We need to understand those. Look at, there's a small one ready to be hooked up, and there's a large diameter one ready to be hooked up. And the small one comes in, and it goes into this device right here, and then out of that device, it comes into one, two, three, four for this one, and they come over and they plug into here, plug into there, plug into here, plug into there. And it's, it's like one route will run kind of like this. And the other one will run like this through the coil. Then at the top, notice one, two out on that one. One, two out that. They collect into this large tube. The large tube comes and bends, and there it goes. So you see the refrigerant flow? So there's two components here. One is the coil, the evaporator coil. The other is the metering device. The metering device, true? That's that expansion valve. This right here is the expansion valve. They're very close together. Because if there is any cool, this, this fluid in here is going to be cool, but if there's any stray heat transfer, well, it's, it's tucked into the duct. It's into the duct. So it's not like... You're, 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 you have the expansion valve very far away from the coil, and then there might be stray heat transfer into it before you get to the coil. Likewise, here's the compressor, true, and the distance between the compressor and the condensing coil is very small. So you have two line segments, if you look at this one, that are very short. This line segment, connecting compressor to the condenser, short. This line segment, connecting the expansion valve or metering device to the evaporator coil, short. What about this line segment, which is the connecting the evaporator inside the house to the compressor outside the house? Very long. And this one, same length as the other one, it's very long. True? So. One thing is, is to get an idea of where the major components are and then where is the, uh, uh, how long the lines are, okay? So these are the two long lines. So that's, I've already answered the first question. Where are these lines? Which ones are long? This is the long line. This is a long line. These are short. Okay. Where is the suction line? The suction line. And it's going to be the long line, okay? And then where is the liquid line? And it's a long line. A liquid line is long. So up here, is this the, the liquid line? And is this the suction line? It is. And so how do they get the terms? Well, the compressor is really drawing the refrigerant from the evaporator. So it's what they call sucking or suction, pulling it out of the evaporator. Okay. When that, when, if you turn the system off and it went to equilibrium, 
the pressure everywhere would be the same. But then when you kick the compressor in, it starts to build this pressure and draw this pressure down. So it starts sucking on the suction line. And then what do we really want coming out of the evaporator is liquid. And so what flows there is liquid. So it's the long liquid line. Now we play some games. Talk about the mass density of liquid compared to the mass density of vapor. LIQ. Which one? Which one's greater? Mass density of liquid or mass density of vapor? Mass density. And then the reciprocal of it, the specific volume of the vapor versus the specific volume of the liquid. Which which one has a higher mass density? Liquid. This is greater. Which one has a higher specific volume? The vapor. True? All right. Now, let me ask this. Which one has a higher mass flow rate? The mass flow rate in the liquid line going from the condenser to the expansion valve or the mass flow rate in the suction line going from the evaporator to the compressor. It's running at steady state. Which one has a higher mass flow rate? They're the same. I, I tricked you up on the way I ask it, in, implying one is greater than the other, but they're exactly the same. True? Okay, so, so if the mass flow rate is equal to rho A V, the velocity, the cross-sectional area of my tube in the density, or you can work in A V divided by specific volume. True? You say to yourself, well, because of either I'm thinking mass density or specific volume, one of them needs a larger area to have roughly the same velocity. I know that they're not exactly the same velocity, but you don't want one flowing super fast and one flowing super slow. Think about the velocities as being comparable. Which needs a larger diameter line? We have a boat for the suction line. Which needs a larger diameter line? And it, it, you, every time I ask it, I know I'll get a, a distribution. And so when you come back to here, one is larger diameter. Can you see it in the illustration? One is smaller diameter, right? And so is the refrigerant flowing from the A coil in the larger diameter line back to the compressor? And that would be the suction line. And the liquid line is flowing into the liquid line, liquid coming in the liquid line, coming into the evaporator. Is that the way it goes? It is. It is, OK? So that's good to, to, to be able to understand that. So when you have your line set connecting the condenser, uh, uh, condensing unit on the outside in the, in the um, furnace, one is a large diameter tube. One is a small diameter tube. The suction line is larger diameter. True? And the liquid line is smaller <laughs> diameter. DIA, diameter. OK. Now what about the discharge and distributor lines? And there's a little key right there. You have distributing the flow from one of the devices called the metering device the expansion valve to different parts of the evaporator, right? So that would be dis distributor lines. And what about this one? This is a short discharge line, discharge line, where it's discharging from the compressor and then going and being distributed through the condensers, different sections, and then it'll be collected back up into the liquid line. But these are the big ones, the suction line and the liquid line. 